Y'all got on this boat for different reasons. But y'all come to the same place. So now I'm asking more of you than I have before. As sure as I know anything, I know this. I am to misbehave. Got a little argument there. It was a little, uh, little heated. A little scuffle. A little scuffle, yeah. And, um... We kind of outed ourselves, so in this segment we'd like to talk about the movie, Serenity. The, the thing that we saw at the theater uh, that I think is possibly the most spectacular piece of mainstream, uh, you know, uh, serial kind of, uh, serial as in, you know, like the old serials, like the bad guy on the villain on the tracks and that kind of thing. It's uh, a very much a Western. It is. It's a Western in space. I think I mentioned that before, but I think that, that, that the storytelling here is really what sets this movie apart. Joss Whedon is an excellent writer. I mean, the guy, he's been nominated for an Oscar for Toy Story, among other things, you know. Uh, he's not just a TV writer. A lot of people are going to, you know, say that. Um, but I think what he learned to do is he learned how to write a, a movie that had a, a theme and started and, and or, or began and finished with that same theme. And everything comes to a close in this movie. And it also, you know, sets things up for possible sequels. It's a fair bet the Alliance knows what's coming. No. They're not going to see this coming. Let's be bad guys. To me, it's funny because I think you really appreciate this movie for a lot of the reasons that Star Trek Next Generation has a lot of little stories and little devices that work really well. And I think that... Well, we're talking about Star Trek again. I'll tell you one thing Star Trek doesn't have is this fucking sense of humor like this. I mean, sure, there's little clever, clever quips, you know, where Dada will say something about how, you know, oh, I, you know... I wish I'd think differently, maybe, if I was a human, you know, or some crap like that, and Picard's like, oh, ho, ho. but I mean, Whedon is fucking clever, man. This guy is a good writer, and I really think that comes across in this movie, and that's what I said earlier about urgency. You know what I mean? The movie feels like it was just made. It doesn't feel like a 70s movie. It doesn't feel like an 80s, you know, action sci-fi movie like The Last Starfighter, Battle Beyond the Stars, all those clones, that kind of crap. I think this movie really pushes the genre forward. I, you know, pushing a genre forward, I, I think there's been way too much work done to push the genre really anywhere unless you're going to do something pretty spectacular, and I don't necessarily think this is it. But I think that it's a good story, and there's good characters, and definitely there are great Joss Whedon twists. I think anybody who appreciates Buffy and Angel knows that it's the, it's the show's sense of it knows what you're about to say, so it's going to make fun of itself before you get a chance. I always appreciated that about both Buffy and Angel, at least the later parts of Buffy. And, and well, Angel. not only does he make but, fun of, of, of itself in this movie, like he does that quite a bit, but he anticipates what you think is going to happen next, and then he doesn't give it to you. Or he gives you the thing that, you know, the thing that never happens that should happen. And it worked for me, but there's also a point when it's just kind of like it's just, well, there's somebody did that. It's always been out there waiting for somebody to go, well, do you want to run this ship? Yes. Well, you can't. I mean, that whole scene is, is an example for me, and they've got it all over the previous, so everybody's seen it, right. of this moment where it's like somebody says something like that, and what would happen if they said yes? You know, it's funny for a couple of times, but he used that a number of times. So rather than, rather than cutting on, the, on the, you know, the, be, the bit that you normally get in the movie where it's just like, here's the punchline, cut. We get to see what happens after the right. punchline. Or you see the, you see the, finally somebody, you know, it's the choose your own adventure. Everybody goes this way, this way, this way, and he's going to go this way, which is a great thing to do to take it in that different direction. But for me, <laughs> it, it, there were just moments like that where I was like, well, that, that's clever and kind of obvious. We've just, we've just added ourselves as uh, people who watch these programs and uh, choose your own adventure books. Reading <laughs> choose your own adventure books. We got Chronicles of Narnia coming out in the. Hey! Hey! 